Hi there, we're going to do a very quick and dirty install of a Rachel Pi server uh, using just a standard home consumer wireless router, uh, nothing special here. A old uh, Lenovo computer, this is a T61, it's you know four or five years old, runs about $100. Then we'll also uh, test the configuration on an Android smartphone and a uh, iPad 1, an old iPad. Um, and so to get started, we've got, this is the Raspberry Pi computer. Um, we have mounted a 32 gigabyte SD card. This is uh, provided by World Possible or something you can download and create an ISO image for. There's a how-to guide online and, and we'll have a video up also about how to create this 32 gigabyte card. But most likely this is being provided to you by us or someone who's uh, already done this on your behalf. Um, so I'm going to start by just plugging in the uh, router power. This uh, router is not yet configured, so um, this will just be a very basic, let's get this up and running and make sure everything works and we can talk about renaming and uh, security and dedicated IPs in a follow-up uh, video. So I've plugged in the router here, um, and then I'm going to plug in the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. So this is just a uh, micro USB port, um, and that'll provide power to the system. And so I'm going to plug that in. Uh, not really a one-handed job, but we can give it a try. Great. All right. And uh, you'll notice that there's a power light that lights up here. Uh, there is no network activity. The light above power there is activity of the Raspberry as it's booting up. The three lights below it you'll see light up uh, when we connect a Cat5 cable from the Raspberry Pi into the router. And so what I'm doing now is I'm using the Ethernet uh, plug, and I'm going to plug in a Cat5 cable from the Raspberry Pi into a LAN port on the router. So that's one of the four uh, networking ports that most routers have. Some have eight or 12 or uh, a multiple of four, but not the internet port. Um, so this yellow port uh, that you see here, that's the port that most people would be plugging their internet into um, back home. But because we're in an environment where we're just creating a local area network, we're gonna plug it to uh, any one of these four slots over here, which are the local access network points. And most routers will have the same configuration with the, the internet or WAN port uh, separated from the other three ports, so, or the other four ports. So you should be aware of, of what's going on there. So now I'm going to take um, my computer, and what I need to do now is discover the IP address of our Raspberry Pi on the router. So the Raspberry Pi is assigned what's called an IP address, um, and that's what the address is that we're going to use to locate the Raspberry Pi on our other devices. And so uh, I'm connecting here. Uh, this router, all I've done is rename it. And uh, there's another video for how to rename your router. But basically straight out of the box, and I've renamed it Rachel G. Uh, this is a dual brand band router, which means it can connect via uh, wireless G and wireless N. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, it's not at all important. Wireless N is just a newer, quicker technology. Uh, wireless G is a little more of a dated technology. And so we've connected and uh, we've got limited internet access or limited network access, and that's because we don't have real internet. This is a Windows 8 PC and it's looking for internet through our router, but we don't have it, so it's calling that limited. I'm gonna go ahead and open Google Chrome. Um, and here you need to know the IP address of your router. So this is a D-Link, I'm sorry, this is a Netgear uh, router, and all routers have different levels of uh, of security or IP addresses, but uh, Netgear has a great function where you can just type in router login dot net, um, and that should take you to the administrative panel of the router. And so it's asking for a username and password. Uh, the default is admin and password. And so now I've logged into the router. It's checking for firmware updates. Um, what this will find if I let it play out is that it's not connected to the internet. There we go. Um, so we do know that there is no internet connection here and it can't update as a result. Um, so we're gonna go over to uh, attach devices. And so we've attached the Raspberry Pi to the router, but we need to know what that Raspberry Pi's IP address is. And so if I look here, it's, uh, these are the attached devices. You can see that top one is the Raspberry Pi. The IP address is 192.168.1.2. So now what I need to do is uh, go ahead and just take my other devices 
and direct them towards that IP address after they've connected to this router. So I'm going to start um, here with an Android phone. Uh, this is a Droid Razer Max. Uh, you can tell the mobile data is turned off, so there is no other way for this to be accessing it. The Wi-Fi is turned off. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And uh, I'm going to want to connect to that same SSID, which was Rachel G. And then I'm going to navigate to the Raspberry Pi. So uh, we can see it's already connecting to Rachel G. I, I've done this before, so the network has been remembered. Otherwise, you would just tap that. Um, you'll see it is now connected to Rachel G. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. And I'm going to open my internet browser, which here is Google Chrome. Um, and where it says search or type the URL, what I want to do is direct this to go find the Raspberry Pi. And so that's where I, I went to go find that IP address. That IP address is 192 dot, oops, sorry, dot 168.1.2. Dot dot and so you'll see I've typed in 192.168.1.2. Um, and I'm going to press go. And what you find is that you're now connected to the Rachel server running on the Raspberry Pi computer. And so you've got all of your standard uh, Khan Academy materials up top, moving into Wikipedia, the K-12 Foundation courseware, um, and the rest of the, the Raspberry Pi Rachel version of content here. And it's all fully searchable through the uh, search bar at the top here. So I'm going to make sure that that same process works here on my iPad. Um, I'm going to go home and... Uh, because it's already stored this network, you, I, I don't have to do this, but you're going to want to do this. The first time you set it up, you need it to go ahead and find the Wi-Fi network. Um, and so for me, that's going to the general settings, or sorry, the Wi-Fi settings, um, and I'm going to choose a network. So right now I'm connected to my home network. I need to choose Rachel G, um, and Rachel N would work also, but I'm choosing Rachel G, which is the older version of Wi-Fi. I'm going to let that connect, and then I'm going to come back to Safari, or Google Chrome, which I've loaded on here. In the same drill, uh, just type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And we're gonna hit go. And again, you'll see that Rachel is available uh, here on my iPad, which also has no other internet access. Uh, if I tried going anywhere else, I would uh, get a failure notice that there's no internet. It's just reading the content that is already uh, included on the Rachel server. And so uh, we'll just test a quick little video run here. So and problem number one on the don't want to talk over Sal. Test problems for Algebra two. And these are all, so this is coded for the uh, iPad, so you can enlarge the size. And uh, you'll see uh, Sal's starting to type over here, or draw, I guess, is what he does. Problem number one, what is it? So I'm going to pause that. I'm going to make sure um, I can get computer access as well. So I'm back on my computer. Uh, this was my router administrative panel, but it's really getting to the same uh, 192.168.1.2. And that IP address changes depending on the router or how often or how recently you've plugged in the Raspberry Pi. You can assign it a static IP address, which will be the subject of another video. But uh, just went ahead and tested that and 192.168.1.2. Um, and again, you'll see the Rachel content. So we tested it on, on three devices. Uh, really, really a basic installation here. Uh, if you have any problems at all, please email us at info at worldpossible.org. That's info at worldpossible.org, and we will do our best to assist you. Thanks so much.